Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. I'm super excited to bring you Magic Square's latest release, the MSB54 Tornado. This is their version of a G1 a Vortex from their Bruticus line. And wow. Um, the set has blown me away. This guy's no exception. He's got some areas that are a bit iffy, but I still think he is amazing. So, without rambling on, let's go ahead and get into it. And you know we have to start with accessories. First, we do get his blaster, done in blue plastic. Got a little bit of detail, but not much. Nothing to write home about, but one thing that's important about this is it does split. So you can use it in alt mode. A little bit of a loose connection there, so be careful. He does come with two blasters that fit both on his arms and on the side of the tail in alt mode. Uh, these are actually painted. The blue is not, but the black and the gray are. And it does bend to accommodate putting it on his arm. These are really nicely done. A little bit loose in helicopter mode, but not too bad. He does come with the helicopter blades, which do pivot. They do lock in place decently. Obviously, they unfold for helicopter mode, but they do a really good job. And very simple connection. It's just plastic with two pegs on the side. I don't recommend taking it in and out very many times because I don't know how well that plastic will hold up. But you literally just pop it in. And it does a superb job. As far as the accessories, you can bring in the arm blasters and just make sure that you Get the right side, bring it in, put in the blue part, and then fold the other part down and around. Give you that, and we'll show it one more time. Goes on the outside of the arm. Push that in. Fold that around. And peg it on the on the bottom of the arm. So you can have that look going. And the blaster, as you can imagine, fits just fine in the hand. He does also come with the combiner parts. Uh, both the hand, which looks really good, it is articulated. I only wish they would have articulated the the front knuckle and the fingers as well because you're a little bit limited um, but they do a decent enough job and they can also splay out to the side also so lots of range on these fingers which is good and then the thumb has a joint and it's on a ball and can pivot side to side and most importantly, he does come with the head and chest, or upper torso, I should say, for Bruticus. I love the, the, the eyes on this. They're painted really, really well. And the head does have a nice range of articulation as, as well. So you can have up, down, attitude, lots of motion. Really cool. Um, you can see the, the different range of motion on the shoulders as well. Uh, we're going to go into this in the final video, the combiner video. So we're not going to spend time on this at all. I'm also not going to show the transformation of Vortex into combined mode. We'll save that for the combiner video. So let's take a look at Tornado. And like I said, Magic Square did a fantastic job. Taking a good look at the face, nice red visor, lots of molded detail. Does do a full 360, You've got some red paint on the back of the head, but 
it's on a peg which I don't know why they did that maybe because they didn't want it to interfere with the transformation but it does do a full 360 so that's good one thing that I have noticed with mine the side the side of the chest wants to pop out a little bit might be because they don't have it done entirely correct with the tail in the back so one thing to be aware of but across the shoulders nice oh, closed panels no gaps or anything shoulders can go up to there since they're on a ball you do have a little bit of a butterfly a little bit of black paint here on the top of the the rockets and the arms uh, you can do a full 360. You do have rotation right below the shoulder. And you do have a nice double joint giving you the full range. Hands do rotate. Notice they rotate a little oddly because the peg isn't exactly centered. It's towards the bottom. So as you rotate them, the hand's going to move in a weird way. But it's okay. No major issues. Uh, blue paint here on the chest and on the, the crotch. You do have full 360. One thing that surprised a lot of people is he does in fact have an ab crunch. It's just a little tight. You do need to pop it out. There's a little plastic peg holding it in. But it's really nice. The sad part is it's a little bit, in my opinion, unusable unless you're doing a falling back pose because the head doesn't tilt backwards. So you're literally stuck with that. So unless you're doing some sort of flying back pose like that, it's really not that usable unless you're just doing a slight bend. Um... Coming down to the thighs, no hip skirts, but the legs do have a very nice range of motion all the way up, all the way out, and typical with Magic Square, very limited back, but not a deal breaker. You do have thigh rotation, you have a double jointed knee, which when you engage We'll give you almost a full run, so quite a bit of range there. And then coming down to the feet, blue plastic by the way, uh, black paint on the front of the shins. A little bit of gappiness here on the inside of the legs, but don't let the complicated look of that worry you. Uh, feet, a little bit down, very slight up. But if you move both of these pieces together, you do have a full rocker. And the toe can pivot just a little, or all the way around if you need to for some reason, but that rocker should be plenty. A little bit of kibble on the side of the legs. There's the view from the back. No gaps on the back, which is nice, but it does look fairly cluttered unfortunately but due to transformation and combiner transformation also I can understand why but very clean looking from the front for comparison here he is with New Age Starscream and Magic Square's Optimus Prime and here he is with his other fellow Combaticons So we're going to go into the transformation. This is definitely going to be the longest part of the video. So if you don't want to do it or see it, just go ahead and fast forward. But definitely make sure that you have a spudger. There's some, some steps that you definitely will need one. But uh, first thing you want to do is go ahead and turn the head. And you want to fold the arms up, pegging them in. Like so. Now rotate the hands 
to where they're off center on the forearm like that otherwise they won't stow correctly pull forward revealing this section it's a little bit tough the first couple of times but then pop out the engines fold the hand in keeping it straight like so for both arms like that go ahead and disconnect the backpack and drop it down you can fold up the helicopter blades if you want it's not going to make much difference but pull the head out and you want to make sure that you bend it properly because if you don't it's not going to fold up right so flip this and then bring these up and we'll worry about making this connection later we can go ahead and separate these two sections and just start unfolding get everything unfolded on both sides there so we can proceed with the front but I like to stop here and do the legs first thing you want to do on the legs undo this piece right here swing it up and you want to tab this into the thighs just to get it out of the way it'll, it'll secure right in Next step, pull this piece forward, flip it up and out of the way. We can go ahead and start rotating this if you want. Bring it towards the front, because if not, this hook right here is going to, to cause you problems. But bring it down, like so. And when you get here, stop. You want to separate the foot from the back of the leg of the toe from the back of the foot and just leave it like this for now rotate the foot all the way around and separate bring this back down this is going to fold securely in there almost like it was designed for it it's pretty amazing but here Flip this around, leaving this piece up. Right here, flip that piece out. You want to spin this piece here 180 degrees until this peg hole is facing out. And then put this back down. That will actually keep this piece in place so you don't run into trouble later. So now, bring the nose piece down. We can continue rotating this piece. This piece will now fold in and rotate this down. And then once you get it level, it's going to slide forward, completing the connection to the windshield and you might need to undo the nose piece a little bit this will swing around and go up underneath and you'll be able to connect that piece there so that hook hooks underneath the nose cone just like that now make sure that this piece is all the way up you can flip this section and you've got one two three connections there it'll fit rather securely and then the last step if you see this blue arm 
right there. We're compressing this and bringing that whole section back until it's flush with the back of the nose. So we'll do this a little bit faster on the other side. So pop this piece out, plug it into the thigh, bring this piece forward, disconnect the foot while rotating the toe, separate. Start rotating this section on the side of the leg around. Making sure to stop and flip that piece up, spin this piece around 180 degrees, flip it back down. Continue rotating. Slide this forward. Now this side has a little piece of plastic there. I don't know if it's intentional or not. It doesn't interfere, but it does keep the joint from overextending. But moving on, collapse the toe, spin that in. The official currency of the United States is the United States dollar. Flip this up, making sure that this section is level. Make the connections. So there's actually four connections. There's one here I forgot to mention right there on the windshield. Compress it on that joint that I had mentioned. And here's where we can connect it. But right here, don't forget to get your gun and separate it. Shove it in securely and make that connection. Final step on the front having to do with these. It says to push them together on that peg. But you'll notice when you go to close it and you make the connections here on the side, it's actually going to separate, which doesn't cause any problems. It's just not a very good connection. So now we can bring this forward and make the connection on the roof. Now, if you want to utilize the storage for the weapon, this is where you want to do so. There's the peg on the side of the rifle. It goes into that hole right there. So it'd be a lot easier if I had smaller fingers. There we go. So got that in there with the arms. We want to get them to where the peg and the hole line up. Now it doesn't hurt to go ahead and make this connection here going up into the roof as well. If you want to, you can connect those before you connect the roof. It depends on what you prefer. But bring this section up. And those pegs will slide into the holes right here.
just like so. Okay, coming down to the back of the tail finally. Make sure those two sections are up. Use your spudger. Bring these two sections down. Like so. These need to fold up inside of the tail. Make sure that your tail rotor is flipped around. And start making connections. First connection I like to make is right here along the chest. Pegs on each side. Not the easiest to get in some cases, but there we go. I expect to have to do cleanup along the way. It's just normal. Especially with the head. It likes to pop down. Make the connections as you go along. As far as this section here, make whatever connections you need. Bring the left side down first and then the right side will peg into the top, making that connection there. Bring the tail down. Split your rotors, which they're tight, so don't expect it to go easily. Now the final step, the engines on the forearms, they pivot, rotate 180 degrees, and bring them down. And they do a nice job of covering up that gap right behind the engines. But let me get it cleaned up, and we'll take a look at it. One thing I failed to mention with the rotor blades, just simply unpeg and unfold all the way around. Just like so. As far as the all mode, I think Magic Square really nailed it, to be honest. Very cartoon accurate. The black on all the windows is painted, as well as the blue going down the front and the engines on the back nicely done um, looking at the vehicle itself you got some nice uh, detail in the mold there's a nice view of the engines a few panel holes here and there but nothing too major there's the, the faux landing gear that folds down out of the chest. Doesn't roll or anything. Just in the general shape of a wheel. Not even painted. That's a little disappointing. Coming around the side. The the tails, they're they're gonna wanna move on you. They they move rather easily. But the they do look good. They are stiff and there is there does feel to be a little bit of a locking point when you move them. But just the slight, slightest motion is going to knock it out of whack, unfortunately. The rear rotor blade, very tight, but it does spin. It's not going to spin as good as the rotor on top does. Speaking of which, they're very well balanced, and they've actually added a little bit of detail as far as mechanisms around the rotor head itself. But you get a nice, good spin. They work really, really well. Uh, they they do suffer a little bit from a little bit of a issue with not wanting to go straight. My personal belief is that's having to do with the paint 
or possibly spruce so you may be able to shave those down a little bit to get them to flatter if you want but I'm not that concerned about it honestly uh, there's the view from the bottom obviously a robot hiding in there but cleans up more than some other figures that I've seen but now also we can bring in his wrist guns and we can plug them into the side like so just make sure that you straighten them up from that bend in robot mode but you definitely have a very nice touch added to this tail section which was kind of bland without him to be honest but I think he looks truly amazing once again a nice alt mode by magic square just so we have him with another aircraft here he is with new age starscream and for comparison to another arm bot here he is with magic squares dead end and we couldn't very well end the review without one last group shot so let's start with the negatives not very many a little bit of tightness in some of the joints, a little bit of looseness, looseness in some of the connections. Very minor. Um, the fact that the head does not lean back really does limit the usage of the ab crunch. It's nice that the ab crunch is there. But if you include an ab crunch, in my opinion, you really need to include the ability for the head to move and tilt backwards. Positives, in my opinion, definitely do outweigh the negatives. With well, the paint that's there is done well. Sculpting is done fantastic, and the articulation is phenomenal. Definitely does grab that G1 cartoon look, which is something as a cartoon collector I'm going for. So definitely clicks all the check boxes that I need to be happy that I have it in my collection. So overall thoughts, as I've said, Magic Square is blown it out of the water. This set's fantastic. I do recommend picking them up if you are interested in a legend scale Bruticus because they're doing an amazing job and I can't recommend it more so I picked mine up from the showzstore.com definitely check them out I know that Magic Square will be getting them to Chosen Prime potentially Toy Dojo so if you're into local local sellers then that's your option two great companies to work with locally but if you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to get your bell on so you get notified about future content. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again next time.